this profile that you're standing in beside here looks a little different to me. It looks like there's a couple of different things uh, here. The top looks different from the lower part. Yes, sir. This is the glacial lacustrine material down here. This is quite hard. Lots of silt and clay in here. This is one parent material. It's coming up probably about to here. So this was probably all glacial lacustrine here, silt and clay, and soil forming processes have softened this up, reworked this. But what's happening here as well is we had a lot of wind and still do after deglaciation before vegetation established anywhere. So there are a lot of these lake beds all over the place and the wind would pick the silt up and blow it. So this is an aeolian or wind blown parent material and the specific name for this is lust. So the wind can blow sand, uh, silt, which we call lus and volcanic ash. If we were to dig some of it out, we'd find it's extremely silty in nature and very, very crumbly. And if I was to blow on this, you can see it blows quite easily. So what happened was as the glaciers left and before vegetation was established on many of the glacial lacustrine landforms that we looked at below, high winds picked up the silt, carried it in the air, and then redeposited over much of the landscapes in the interior here. So this is a lus capping that's on top of the glacial lacustrine material. So we actually have two parent materials, one on top of the other. What kind of soil formed in this uh, parent material on this location? Well, we're in a grassland environment, so we have the climate playing a factor, so it's very dry. In dry environments or in grasslands, we get chernozemic soils. This is a black chernozem. It has a very dark uh, AH horizon on the surface. Uh, a lot of plant material here. Uh, grass roots decomposing gives the dark color for this AH. And then we have a BM horizon and then our C. Mm -hmm. Now we have to remember that when you're dealing with parent materials, when the landscape is laid down, the parent material is laid down, that horizon is our C horizon. Mm -hmm. And our soils develop on those parent materials, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. So, so this is a pretty small site and uh, sometimes it's a little hard to see these features. Are there places where we can see this on a larger scale? Yes, in the dry areas of the, of the interior of British Columbia through the Kamloops area down through the Okanagan, down into the United States, up towards Whitehorse where you had these broad valleys. We had these very, very large lakes that were dammed by glaciers in the valleys. And then as those glaciers melted, the water would drain away, exposing the silts and clays that were left behind. And we have very extensive deposits all through the interior here. And they survive in dry environments. If you were in a wetter environment down on the coast, for example, before vegetation established, most of them would have been eroded away because these are very, very unstable when they get wet.